Let's take a look at secondary dominance. Basically, all we're doing is we're taking a chord from another key and putting it into our chord progression. But how does that all work and how you know which chords to use? That's, of course, the question. So first, let's take a look at this diagram. This is showing all of the chords in the key of C and a Roman numeral associated with each of them. This is from Functional Harmony Theory. I made a video on that last week and have a link to it down in the description if you want to check that out before watching the rest of this video. So using this diagram, we can see that the five chord is G. Now in Functional Harmony, the five chord wants to go to one. And we also call the five chord the dominant chord, by the way. So that's where that part of the name comes in. But anyways, here, the five chord is G and so in this particular example, G is going to go to C, 5 to 1. Now bear with me for a moment, and let's talk about the key of G. In the key of G, the 5 chord is D, right? So D wants to go to G, the 5 1 progression here. Okay, so now forget about G for a second, we're going to go back to C. Let's go ahead and let's make a chord progression in the key of C. This is a very common progression, we'll go 1, 4, 5, 1, or C, F, G, C, right? So check this out. Now let's take a look at that G chord. In the key of G, we know that the 5 chord is D. So if we put D before G, a D major chord, which isn't a chord in the key of C, then it's like we're, we're using the 5 chord of our 5 chord in the key of C. It's a 5 of 5, as it's called. So if you see here, you can see that D is the 5 chord of G, blah blah blah, you get the idea. So you see where we're kind of pulling this from. This gets a little bit complex because things are going in a bunch of different directions. But just listen to how it sounds, because it has that 5-1 resolution from another key within the key of C. Check it out. We're going to go 1, 4, 5 of 5, which is our secondary dominant chord, to 5, and then 1. Here's what it sounds like. Pretty cool, right? And that's really all there is to it. We, just, we decided that we wanted to do a 5 of 5. So we took our 5 chord in the key of C and we tried to figure out what the 5 chord was in the key of G because G is the 5 in the key of C, right? So a 5 of 5, that's basically how it works. Now, we can take this a step further and we should, honestly, because you don't have to have just a 5 of 5. You can have a 5 of 2, a 5 of 6, a 5 of whatever. So let's, let's look at one of those. Let's look at a 5 of 6. So in this case, we're going to the 6 in the key of C, which is A minor. And we want to figure out what the five chord is in the key of A minor. So we'll look at this, a diagram looks a little bit different when you're looking at this functional harmony stuff. But here is A minor, right, written out in functional harmony. So we're going to look at the five chord here, which is an E. And we look back at our C major diagram and we see E obviously is not a chord in the key of C, but we can use it as a secondary dominant. So it's a five of six. So now, if we were to have a progression that went 1, 6, 5, 1, we could add in our secondary dominant and change the progression to 1, 5 of 6, 6, 5, 1. Listen to how that sounds. Now this can also be used in minor keys, like for example, in A minor, you could have a 5 of flat 3, whatever you want to do. You can have a 5 of anything, and you can have multiple 5 of 5s in a progression. There doesn't have to just be one. But this is essentially all there is to secondary dominance, and it's really all you need to know. As an added note, if you want to make any of these 5 chords a dominant 7, you can totally do that, and it actually, in some cases, will sound better. So, for, you know, for example, with our um, 5 of 6, that E chord could be an E dominant 7 chord. It sounds a whole lot better. Um, that is, if, you, if you're not familiar with what dominant seventh chords are, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But that is, if you, if you are familiar, that's something you can add in and it sounded really good. All that being said, please let me know if you have any questions. This was kind of a quicker explanation of a theory topic. So I'm kind of experimenting, I guess, with a different style. Um, but it took me a long time to wrap my head around secondary dominance. It had to be explained to me like five times from a bunch of different people before, I, before it ever clicked for me. So... If you're having trouble comprehending it or something, let me know. I would be more than happy to help you with it. And that being said, um, a friend of mine here on YouTube at Orchestra Studios did a video on this as well. And so it's just another perspective on it if you want to check it out. So I have a link in the description to that video too. Uh, I think it's really helpful to get 
different viewpoints on some of this stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.